Welcome into the KSO Show. I'm Mason Voth. That's Derek Young. Here as we get ready for K-State in Houston, the Cats continuing their uh, comeback tour as they try to erase that nasty night in Provo, Utah, which unfortunately is proving much harder to do than originally thought because even though I think in the moment everybody was kind of like, okay, you can make sense of this loss. You can kind of justify it. Maybe it's easier to lose a game that's a little fluky like this and it just gets away from you in a hurry. Um, it stinks because BYU still hasn't lost a game and Iowa State also hasn't lost. So you're chasing and looking up at all these teams and you're really running out of time to get any help and have any margin of error. So K-State has to continue to be perfect. They've done it so far through four games. Now it continues this weekend on the road at Houston. But before we talk Cats and Cougs, D.Y., uh, let's get your thoughts on what transpired last Saturday against KU. Yeah, it's it's a case where the Jayhawks won it bad enough and are talented enough to now where those games are definitely more in the balance. Now we'll see what happens next year. They have to really – retool and, and reload their roster if they want to sustain that level of, of play. But we saw we saw two things, at least on the Kansas part. We saw why the expectations were so high this year because they can compete at a high level. We also saw why they've lost a lot of games because the way they lost that game to K-State was, and, and I would argue that K-State went and won that game too, they didn't really just have a given to them by the Jayhawks. But how Kansas lost that game is how Kansas has lost a lot of games this year. They haven't made the plays at the end of the games that help you win uh, in one way or another, right? They, they're just not the team. I think I've seen, like, they've given up almost, like, what, 80 points in the last two minutes of halves this year and haven't scored any. I mean... They are playing basically great for the first 28 minutes. Great, maybe a strong word. They're playing pretty good for the first 28 minutes of the first half and then awful in the last two. They're playing great for the first 28 minutes of the second half and then awful the last two. Those last two minutes of each half are pretty important. So on that front, that's why Kansas is losing. On the other end, Kansas State is basically reversing what hurt them last year. Um, they've basically learned their lesson. They are making those plays. They're basically two opposite teams, right? Kansas State is playing in a good amount of close games too, but on the flip side, they're making the plays to win. They needed a touchdown and a defensive stop at Tulane. They got it with a Jack Faber's scoop and score and then a VJ Payne interception. They needed a touchdown and a defensive stop to win at Colorado. They got it. Avery Johnson throws the bomb to Jace Brown and then um, they get the three and out the next possession, and then they can uh, go into victory formation. They needed a couple of field goals from Chris Tennant and four defensive stops in the fourth quarter to beat KU. And despite not really stopping KU before that fourth quarter, they got that. So it, it, it's easy to criticize the defense this year, but boy, when their number is called in like the most critical moment, they answer. Yeah, they have stepped up when needed. And I, it's, I think a lot we've talked about the offense being different mentality wise from last year, where um, last year's offense, I don't know that they win some of the games that they do because the defense, for the most part, they, they gave the opportunities last year. But what the defense didn't do last year was continue to finish the job where they, it was basically like saying, Hey, look, I got three or four good possessions in me here to close out a game, but I may not have that fifth one that you need. The, this year, it's been the defense is going start to finish when you need it, and then the offense is obviously obliging as well. Uh, also, I should mention to the people watching on YouTube, uh, D.Y. in the Halloween spirit today uh, as we record this on Halloween. Uh, so he, he can explain why he's still in character here, uh, even for those watching a day after Halloween ends. Oh, well, I woke up and still had the makeup on, so I figured I'd just, because we, we celebrate Halloween on Wednesday night because we're um, leaving town here on Thursday to to go to the halfway point between here and Houston and not do that all in one shot. So uh, I figured if my makeup was still on, I'd put the costume on as well. So that's where we are. And you're right about the defense. I'll go kind of pivot back to that. 
Um, Oklahoma State didn't get that last stop when they needed it, and the offense did no favors last year against Oklahoma State. It's probably more on them. It's probably more on the offense against Texas. They got to go down and yeah, uh, and and overtime it and be better there as well and get the score, especially when the defense stopped Texas and held them to a field goal. Yeah, uh, but defense wise, they they kind of split the difference. I, I would say last year it was the offense against Oklahoma State and Texas. Um, although the defense was, it was Missouri, the offense fault. Missouri yeah. and Iowa State. Those Missouri those and Iowa State's defense. Uh, as much as it, the offense could have helped against Missouri, it's just like we need that. You know, they weren't getting that last stop. Yeah. Well, and you, you look at it and you go, okay, you scored 27 points on the road at the team that went on to win the Cotton Bowl. You scored 35 points at home. Like you were, you put Brady Cook on the map. No one yeah. else did before that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, that, you were the ones that let. Eli Drinkwitz know that, oh, hey, maybe I should use Luther Burden. Uh, that might be a good thing. Uh, in regards to D.Y.'s Halloween costume, at first I thought he was coming on as a ref. I just saw the stripes, and then uh, – oh, I, I, You just had fire in your eyes. You saw a referee. I, yeah, I was ready to go after you. I was like, is that is is that Steve Warner and Jason Coles refereeing a middle school basketball green, game? I, I just need the green hair to put it all together. We'll be good. Uh, but, no, it's, it's in fact Beetlejuice. Uh, I've got a, a comp for everybody on what – Jalen Daniels is. Uh, he is Matt Harvey, the former Mets pitcher. Where uh, and former Red and former Red and Royal and Angel and Oriole. Uh, he <laughs> he bounced around a little bit there at the end, but I say that, and uh, all the Royals fans out there will certainly get this. But Matt Harvey, you think about what he was in in Game Five against the Royals in 2015. Went eight innings, basically had shut the Royals down, and then it was like, all right, ninth inning, he wants it. He's going to go out there. He's going to try and close this puppy out. And he ended up collapsing in hilarious fashion and handing the Royals the World Series, essentially. Um, now, he didn't lose the game there. Somebody else had to come in and do that uh, once they got into extra innings. But he did allow the Royals to tie it. Uh, and I kind of feel like that's where Jalen Daniels is right now because he's obviously got – talent and he's a pretty good quarterback but he's had miserable fourth quarters this season where he's barely able to get his team into opponent territory on that last drive when they need it so many of them have ended with interceptions or fumbles uh, like what happened in Manhattan on Saturday so uh, there's just something there it's a mental block for this team and I I've said it all along this they're season good. It, it's yeah. weird because we could actually say they're good, and K-State fans should probably feel the same. You watch that team play for 60 minutes. They were really good. They just can't get out of their own way. I'd, I'd watch them play for about 45 minutes, and then, you know, if you if you watch the game through three quarters, like, man, this KU team, you, you take the yeah. record off the score bug. You're like, what are they? They're like like five and one or something here? Uh, no, they're, they were two and five. And, um, and, and you're right. And I watched Jalen Daniels for the most part in that game. I'm like, man, he is playing really good, especially the way he was able to escape pressure a lot. And it was a little, to be honest, Jalen Daniels was giving me shades of Shador Sanders for most of that game. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's good. That's a good point. Um, because there, I mean, there's a lot of what Jalen Daniels did that, that kept KU in that game. His mobility was obviously a huge part of that, but K-State ends up getting the win there and taking down KU to win their 16th straight in the Sunflower Showdown. All right, Cats and Cougs this weekend. K-State 13.5-point favorites on the road at Houston, who all throughout the season has kind of bounced around our Big 12 power rankings where we go from thinking, okay, they are just as bad as we thought they were. Hey, maybe they're a little bit better uh, because they've kind of snuck up and gotten a couple of wins in Big 12 play, a road win at TCU, and then a home win against Utah. And really, the difference in how they've played this season has come on uh, late with Zeon Chris, who has been who was their backup quarterback, just a sophomore. But he relieved Donovan Smith in the game against TCU. They actually started him in that game. He got hurt. Donovan Smith had to close it out after they had built a significant lead. But he was good in that game, used his legs for almost 97 rushing yards, didn't play as much in the game against KU, which Houston got blown out 42-14. to He only attempted four passes, only ran the ball two times, and one of those was a sack. Uh, and then Utah, you go and look at them. He plays a majority of the game. 13 pass attempts, 
just six of 13 for two touchdowns and a pick and 61 yards. But again, they tried using his legs, 17 carries, 45 yards. Not overly impressive numbers for Chris in that game. But in the two games that he has started, Houston has been able to get the win against teams that even though they're struggling this year, I think most would still consider Utah and TCU a better team than Houston. But Houston's found a way, and like we know they have Willie Fritz coaching them. So this is this could set up to be uh, a little bit of a challenge for K-State. Yeah, and add in the weather, it could get a little weird on them, of course. And, you know, I said it before the year, and, and then I said it again in our – Big 12 power rankings, I think you used the quote. I was like, we expected Willie Fritz to – we expected Houston under Willie Fritz just because they are so well coached to pop up and steal a few Big 12 games this year. And guess what? They already have. Do they get a third? Maybe. I hope it's not K-State, but it wouldn't shock me if they can get a third. So you got to be on your P's and Q's when playing this Houston team because – if you don't play well enough, they'll take it. Now, will they give you a win? No, they'll give you a win in that they're not good enough. But they're not going to give you a win as in you don't show up and you still win. You can't do that to Houston. They're too well coached. Um, their problem moving forward is, though they have a good defense, it's that they can, and I said this about Kansas State early in the year, and now this can't be done to K-State, Houston is one of, what, two, three teams in the Big 12 that you can just game script out of a game because they can't throw the ball. Like, as much as I respect Houston and their coaches, like, there is, they basically only have one way they can win a game because yeah. they have to win with defense and running the football. If they are forced to throw it, they have no chance. So they are a good team, but they're – their window of opportunity, their margin for error is basically non-existent. So that's how I would describe the Cougars, uh, despite having good coaching staff. They'll have a, I tell you what, defensively, they'll have a great plan for K-State. I can see K-State not being as productive on offense as they haven't in prior weeks, just because Houston will have a good plan for them. And going back to the Big 12 race, you said it. I mean, Kansas State's not getting much help. BYU's still undefeated. Iowa State's still undefeated. What I would say here is we're getting so late, um, and the number of times that those teams can lose is limited at this point. Um, I think Kansas State's pretty much operating this way. Kansas State just has to win out. I mean, yeah. if they win out, they'll be in Arlington one way or another. I think they'll hold enough of the tiebreakers there. If it's a three-way, if it's two-way, then they'll both go, right? So, I'm not, there's not a whole lot of concern for me, but I would say it'd be because of what BYU and Iowa State are doing, Kansas State, their avenue to Arlington is to basically win out. I mean, as good as they have been, there's just no margin for error there because BYU and Iowa State aren't getting tripped up. Yeah, no, you, you have to operate that way. Um, and it may just be your best route no matter what because even BYU one slip up by those teams. Um, it would still require K-State to beat Iowa State because if they lose to Iowa State, then they have a second loss. Um, I, I mean, Iowa State would have to lose three times for K-State to be able to drop that game in Ames, uh, essentially because of the tiebreaker and everything. That would well, you would have to lose three times, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So unless, yeah, unless something weird happened where they all ended up with two losses and then one of the losses for K-State wasn't the Iowa State, I, I, it would be – it would be weird. Um, so K-State has to essentially win out and get the job taken care of. Um, but it would be nice if one of those teams volunteered to collapse down the stretch of the season. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Houston, you talk about they can really only win the game one way because you can script them out. Uh, Houston has not won a game this season where the, when their opponent has scored at least 20 points. Um, the the like narrowest of margins there, and that stat being true, Iowa State – just barely crossed 20 against them. Uh, that was a 20 to nothing win for Iowa nope, State. And that and was a 3-0 game in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Iowa State was only up 3 nothing at halftime. They struggled to do a lot in that game. Now, Iowa State's offense, not as potent as K-State's. And Iowa State, that might be their greatest weakness this year is that their it's offense will go through stretches that, yeah, that has some serious lulls. Yeah, um, you would expect teams 
especially when it's undefeated, to just be like getting better on both sides of the ball. Iowa State's getting better on defense, which is scary, but they're getting worse on offense, which is puzzling. Yeah, and they're they're needing their defense to basically create big time point opportunities. Rocco's for clutch. That's about it. Year. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. They have at least found their running game a little bit recently. Um, when you, you take another no name running back that wasn't a starter, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how that ends up. That's that's their out. that's their magic potion. They're like, well, if we start to struggle running uh, on offense. We're just going to go with our four string running back is apparently they'll just go for three hundred yards. Houston in their their throwing situation. Uh, you mentioned that as well. They can't really come back into games. That's because. Chris can't throw the ball, and Donovan Smith can throw the ball to the other team. Care of it. Yeah. yeah, and also he takes a lot of sacks. Uh, he's basically uh, – let me – I can do the quick math on this one here for you. Uh, but when you look at Donovan Smith, on almost 13% of well, – I guess a little less than that, but like roughly 10% of his dropbacks, uh, he is getting sacked this year. So he's he's open to letting that happen to himself. Um, and, and K-State, whoever's back there, should be in good hands. And I think it helps them, too, that when Chris is in the game, it's it's almost like K-State in some ways has to draw back on a 2019 when they played Navy, where it's like he, the quarterback's really only going to run the ball or give it to somebody else to run. Like You need to be smart enough to hang with some receivers and not get burnt for like a 50-yard trick play or something. Uh, it wouldn't be as tricked up with with Houston but like if Chris is in the game the threat of him throwing the football is pretty low and then if Donovan Smith is in the game then you can kind of go back to your your normal set uh and and just try and get after him and make him uncomfortable and force those takeaways which we've talked about K-State has been far better at doing this season and they showcased it uh on Saturday night against KU when they were able to go out there and force two fumbles. Now, one of them didn't necessarily count as a takeaway because it was a turnover on downs. But you force two fumbles, you get the interception. K-State's been good at that this year. So I, I actually like this matchup for them against Houston a lot. Yeah, I I, I do. I, part of it's just going to be mentally being locked in and showing up. The other part of it is adjusting because Willie Fritz will have a good plan for their offense. And then the other part is, yeah, yeah your corners are going to have to play well. Uh, and I, and the only reason why I say that is because you want to be able to depend on them in man coverage to just kind of. And Houston do, has some big receivers. That, yeah, they don't. But, the stats yeah. don't bear that out. But Houston has some. It's more or less, you want to put, you want to load the box to take away what Houston does, which is you know they they want to run the ball. They don't want to throw the ball. So you want to be able to be comfortable putting your corners on an island so you can devote numbers to the rest of what Houston does. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you on that one. It's, I think, I mean, this is a game where K-State's defense is going to set the tone in it where if they're locked in and they can kind of just come through and, and shut this thing down early, um, that's going to, to be significant for them. One other note in all of this, while Houston has been able to kind of hold teams off the their scoring pace and I don't know this may say more about the teams that Houston has played than Houston's defense themselves because you look at the offenses they faced uh, I mean Cincinnati went for 34 against them Iowa State only 20 but as I mentioned Iowa State's offense can struggle TCU they can have some some struggles at times they're just if TCU the bombs score, aren't though. if the bombs aren't working for TCU they're not going to score if they are then you better duck and cover. That's a pretty. I, I'll I'll give Houston credit for that one. The holding TCU down. That's pretty good. Yeah, uh, and against KU, Houston turned it over. I mean, Donovan Smith threw through three interceptions in yeah. that game. Um, and it, you can I'll go and look. Defense. You can go and look directly at them. Uh, the and actually there were four interceptions in the Houston game because Chris threw the first interception in the game. Uh, in the very next play, KU had a forty-eight yard touchdown pass. So like. And it's a short field too. Yeah, so. they, you you've had struggles. You've you've gone through all this, um, and then you go through the rest of Houston and Utah. We know they are a mess on offense right now. They're making bad teams look competent somewhat against them. So I I don't know how much of it's that because if you dive into the actual numbers, Houston is only 13th in the Big 12 in terms of sacks this season. They've gotten the quarterback 12 times. 
Uh, you compare that to the top of the league. Colorado is first at 22. K-State has 21, and KU has 19. So you saw a better pass rush from KU, which the K-State offensive line handled the pass rush pretty well. And then Houston, they are middle of the pack in terms of forced fumbles, but they are also 13th in the league in interceptions. Um, the only teams that are worse than them are TCU, West Virginia, and Cincinnati. But Houston's only had six picks this season. Um, so I, th this is one of those deals where you got to give some respect to it, but I really think if we, we look at it, to me, it feels like the Houston defense is more a product of playing some inconsistent offenses. They have not played the best offenses in the league outside of KU, really, and KU put up 42 points on them. So mm -hmm. I, I think K-State yeah. is in that same – same kind of boat. Like if you, if if you had Colorado play against Houston, I think Colorado is putting up thirty five points, pretty easy. I think K State might be in that same neighborhood this weekend. I would say I would probably agree with that, but I just think uh, blindly, I think Fritz will have a good plan, and yeah, we'll see. And Houston's going to get better every week too. Yeah, that's true. And, I mean, you, you get another win. There's going to be some belief. They'll be pretty fired up. Uh, this is like a lot of games we talk about with K-State because most of the time they are playing an inferior opponent. Just yeah. go out there, pop them early, and, and, and you know, you know, and, and not to say Kansas State is a blue blood or anymore or, or anything like that, although it would be fun to just say that and try to – They're a trigger, Big 12 blue blood. Yeah, try to trigger KU fans. But 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 seriously, though, like at least this year, and maybe it'll be every year. Or I sure hope so. K State's kind of that team that has the the target on their back a little bit, right? They mm -hmm. were they 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 kind of get the hype. They got the ranking. They 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 had the loss to BYU, but people talk about them. They they are the only preseason favorite that is still a favorite. So that's kind of. You know, you get the target on your back, and Avery Johnson kind of gets hype, right? He gets talked about a lot in national media. Sure, yep. BYU and Iowa State are undefeated and have the have probably the clearest path, especially since Iowa State gets to play BYU or gets to play K State at home. Are they talked as much about K State? Uh, if, if anything, it's the same. BYU definitely gets overlooked. So when it comes to a target, it's probably all three of them. There, there is a target on the back of K State where I think you do get a lot of teams or maybe everyone's best shot. I think I think so. I think K-State is probably right now. I think going into the season, it was probably K-State and Oklahoma State and Utah that people looked at in, in the league outside of it and would have said, hey, like this, this is a really good team. We Let's get after them. Let's like kind of inform. I, I don't know that people are, are looking at BYU and Iowa State like that still. And, and they should be because of how they're playing this year. But I just don't think, they necessarily do, and I mean, it's probably why some teams have have gotten bur burnt by it when we think maybe there's like a little bit of an upset spot. But uh, K State Houston this weekend, uh, expecting wet weather still. I went and looked at the uh, updated forecast to this morning for Houston. So around kickoff, 81, 60 percent chance of rain gets up to 70 percent chance of rain uh, after the game starts. Uh, so we're probably going to be expecting a uh, wet day in Houston, which I don't know if that's good or bad for K-State. I don't know if it's bad for K-State, but it's good for Houston, I think. It is good for Houston because, uh, I mean, they that might even throw. just – Yeah, they, it could totally take out even the notion that maybe they should throw the ball. So Although, although that means K-State could also run all over them. But, I mean, both teams are okay at stopping the run. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it, it could be a, a fascinating ball game, but uh, the Cats – Two touchdown favorites there. All right, we'll take a pause on talking K-State Houston. Dive into best bets now. And uh, after D.Y. had such a good week, uh, I had an okay week last week. D.Y. took a slide back. 0-3 uh, yeah. week for D.Y. last week. Tough going. I went 2-1. and one. So there is this week's look. Uh, what, was the, what were the losses? Do you remember? I, I don't uh, know. I, let me see. I I did have them uh, at one point, but then I uh, – last week I screwed up. I'll tell you that much. I screwed up on uh, keeping them safe, but I can get them real quick for you. I know that you had – Oh, I it found was it. all Big 12 games. You had uh, – Arizona Oklahoma minus State three. Baylor. Arizona minus three had no chance. You missed you the over in Oklahoma State Baylor uh, by one. 
and then yeah, you had another uh, team. Oh, UCF. That, oh, yeah. UCF. Arizona, Arizona and UCF Arizona. both had no yep. chance. Those were bad. I was gonna say, did I did I get close? Even the Oklahoma State Baylor under. I think that lost in like the third quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you missed it by a point. The the you oh. had it at sixty five and ended up totaling to sixty six. Uh, but it may have been the third quarter because both teams kind of just quit scoring in the fourth quarter. Uh, o State had a lot of opportunities. All right, uh, DY going back with a heavy Big Twelve influence this like week, it. liking some unders. Uh, I didn't meanwhile, really I like the. I didn't really like a lot of bets this week in general. It's not a great weekend, and, and there's no. less than forty games on Saturday because it's the it's the most bye week heavy of. For teams this this week, which is, I mean, evidenced by the fact that K State Houston is two thirty on Fox, but and then there's still like there were seven or eight games during the week, which there's just more yeah. and more games during the week anymore in college football. So there's, I think someone said there's only like thirty seven games on Saturday. Yeah, that's pretty crazy because tonight we get Tulane and Charlotte, uh, and then Friday, uh, Go Green Bay, Boise State playing again. Uh, Boise so State just doesn't play State. on Saturdays, do they? Yeah. I don't think they like it. South Florida, Florida Atlantic, Georgia State, UConn. Uh, hey, UConn, your boys, seven and a half point favorites trying to get to bowl eligibility this year. You've My tossed boys. some UConn picks. Well, you've, I think you picked UConn once or twice last year, so <laughs> they're your boys now. Hey, real quick, shout out to your real boy, Chris Tennant, uh, on Saturday. That yeah. paid off. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, just going to uh, shameless plug here. Uh, if you haven't, go and, and listen, watch, whatever, whatever, however way you consume it. Uh, the three mile planner interview this week at Colme Mick does it's sponsored by Riverbank Brewery and Wildcat NIL. It's with Chris Tennant. Um, he tell it kind of tells his story, it's really good. He, he even admits that you know, if it wasn't for Chris Kleiman, he probably would have quit football. That's, I mean, it's it's pretty incredible, uh, to, to hear that and and see how it's all worked out for him. I, I think, I think he saw a lot of the hate and couldn't, yeah, get away from it. Yeah, which I makes sense, like it. it it's it's tough being a kicker because look enough people already don't think that you belong on a football field and then when you're struggling like it's the easiest position to kind of pile on because you're not like every other position where we, we talk about guys that make mistakes over the course of a football game they're going to be out there the next five snaps then like they're going to yeah. get a chance to make up for it um where we've talked about in various games this year where so and so may have had a bad game, but then they they got to make the big play, and so you got to give them at least credit for that. The kicker, you're going to get like you get a stew, maybe three cracks out of the game, maybe. And if you're Chris Tennant and K State's offense, there hasn't been a lot of field goals being kicked the last couple of years, so it's just you get your your couple of licks. You got to take advantage of them, and he uh, he came through. And I we've seen going back all the way to 2022, Chris Kleiman has been locked in with Chris Tennant for a while he felt bad for him when he struggled early in 22 and then he had, was really positive and really happy for him that he was able to be good against Oklahoma and then the struggles kind of came back uh but Chris Tennant has evolved into a he, very very good kicker he was okay last year um people forget he had a really close kick last year at Texas that kind of sent that game to overtime yeah. too so this wasn't the first like this was bigger, but it wasn't the first time he's done something like that. He was okay to solve last year. He's been really good this year. I think he, I think I looked and and field goal percentage now he's I think number two or number three in the Big Twelve. So he's uh, yeah. What what does Chris Clem said? He's banging them through. He likes to say banging them. Yeah, he's yeah. banging them through. Um, so and that whole you know if it wasn't for Chris Clem would have quit football. That that goes to show you the respect and the kind of coach that Chris Clem is as well. So. Yeah. Uh, no, no doubt about it there. So, uh, good, good to know. And uh, Chris Tennant is third in the Big Twelve uh, in terms of total uh, points scored this season, uh, behind Will Farron, the BYU kicker who has seventy five points accounted for. Here's the wild one: like this is normally a, a spot that is for place kickers because they're getting every extra point. They're getting some three point plays. Like they're scoring points in every game for every team. R.J. Harvey is number one in the Big 12 in points scored with 92 this season. And Cam Scadaboo is fourth with 60. Um, those are the only non-kickers uh, in the top 10 outside of Ollie Gordon, who's towards the bottom of that list. But It goes to show you how less teams are kicking field goals nowadays, how the game is kind That's of pivoted true. away from that. It also goes to show you that 
and nothing well i kind of against ucf and i yeah, really yeah. It's not really against arizona state since they've been productive but like scatabo's probably got almost all of their touchdowns rj harvey's probably got almost all of ucf those those are kind of one-man shows yeah, uh, Scadaboo this season, 10 touchdowns. R.J. Harvey has 15 touchdowns. Yeah, and year. as bad as they've been, I don't know if anyone else has any for them. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, I'm going through here. Uh, let's see. Um, where's the next UCF touchdown? Uh, Kobe Hudson, their wide receiver, has three touchdowns. Yeah, so R.J. Totally Harvey has 15. Kobe Hudson has 15. <laughs> Uh, or th three, so fifteen to three. No there. quarterback problems aren't helping there. Yeah. Uh, only two players in the Big Twelve have scored double digit touchdowns this season: Harvey and Scadaboo. Uh, the other top five in touchdowns: Taj Brooks and Ollie Gordon at nine. Devin Neal, Travis Hunter at eight. Yeah, uh, is yeah. the top five. Everyone's like, "Where's DJ Giddens?" Well, I can't say it. we don't let DJ Giddens score. Apparently, well, DJ Giddens is uh, finally tied with Dylan Edwards for five touchdowns this year. Those are the two the best TD touchdown game was the game where he didn't really get any yards. He had two at Colorado, right? Yeah, <laughs> or two two at oh, West, Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah, uh, Avery Johnson has four. He added to that this past weekend, and uh, those are the only guys inside the. Uh, Jace Brown has three. I was going to say. Those are the only guys inside the top 50. Um, I can't say there's a lot of bounce. They, they, they give all their touchdowns to the tight ends. Yeah, which <laughs> basically every tight end right now has two touchdowns. Uh, Braden Lofton, Will Swanson, uh, Will Ancio, and uh, Garrett Oakley is, as well. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Eight, all right. Eight, eight touchdowns for the tight ends. Yeah, they're, well, I think it's actually 10 in total uh, oh. is what the, the stat that was put out says now because i think some of those guys have more than two but there you go all right uh best bets you can uh lead it off beetlejuice baylor yeah. and all these unders yeah basically fading tcu baylor is a better football team um they look pretty good with sawyer robertson a quarterback. Yeah, our guy we've been on that for a while yeah you were on it before all of us but uh it's the real deal baylor is a different team since they put sawyer robertson at quarterback i don't know would you would you take that too i think baylor minus three is a pretty good bet I would. It's just there's a lot of teams in the Big 12 right now that that you don't trust. make me a little antsy because they could all turn into something that they haven't been at any moment. Uh, I mean, the the worst game of the weekend is Arizona UCF though for that because I hate both of those teams. Like yeah, I can't trust I either one of them, so I just don't know where I, I would also, go on it. But I, I I buy into Baylor a little bit more at home, and like you said, Sawyer Robertson is playing good football. Um, and I think TCU just has so much other stuff like going on. I, I can't imagine it's fun to be Sunday Dykes right now. So uh, Baylor, I, Dave Aranda, for as weird as he is, it might help him because I think it helps him block out some of the outside stuff. And I think he just is just kind of this steady psycho that doesn't care. Yeah, I just think Baylor's a better team. They're at home. And like it would shock me if TCU wins three games in a row. Like they beat Utah because Utah can't score. Utah scored seven on a TC, bad TCU defense. That's true. They beat Texas Tech because they had to come back from down 17. So, like, the way that TCU did the last two weeks. And lost their quarterback again. Yeah, and TCU's, what they've done is also not replicable against Baylor, in my opinion. So, I like that. The under in Tech, Iowa State, look, Iowa State's the one defense that can hold the Tech offense down. Yeah, Tech gives up a ton, but I don't think Iowa State's going to score a ton. So, I just self-explanatory. I I think Iowa State's a far better team. And in the script for Iowa State to win games, it's usually not going to go over 56. That's yeah. just the way I see it. Yep. And the same way with Oklahoma State. Like, yeah, Arizona State might score a ton. I don't know. But I don't think Oklahoma State's going to score. Yeah. Oh, oh, and if they are, they're probably turning the ball over in there, too. So, like, uh, I, that just some weird games this week in the Big 12, which is why I, I didn't go in the Big 12 at all with mine. Uh, I'm going to continue to to use Michigan as much as I can in our our bets this year, and They're most good. of the time against them. Uh, so, oh, by the way, shout out to Joel Cloud, who still thinks Michigan is a uh, playoff contender. Apparently. Oh well, you know uh, what? Four losses doesn't disqualify, you, right? You know, you could have three or four. Uh, they might only have three. I I thought maybe they had four, but maybe it is only three. So maybe you do have to. Yeah, they only have three. So I guess we it, have. It to feels really, like six. I will say. <laughs> yeah, I, there's to me. I would go. I think their schedule probably eliminates them though at five and three because I don't think they're beating Oregon. I don't think they're beating Indiana. I don't think they're beating Ohio State. They basically have to. <laughs> I guess. I, I guess the nine and three team with the wins of our Ohio State, Oregon, and Indiana might be in. Yeah, I mean, if they did it, sure, but uh, I they think... They got to score. 
<laughs> I think we probably can say that they won't. So I'm taking the Ducks minus the 15 and a half this weekend. Uh, another double digit spread that I like Clemson at home against Louisville. We've talked a lot about Clemson lately. Um, they've just ever since week one against Georgia, when we all wanted to kick them to the curb, they've gone through and they've dominated uh, their opponents. You go and look, they beat App State by 46. They beat NC State by 24, Stanford by 26. Uh, weird one against Florida State only by 16, but then they got back into form because uh, they beat Wake Forest by 35 and Virginia by 17. Home game at night uh, against Louisville, I'm going to go with Clemson because I've been a Louisville hater all year, and it's not really paid off for me yet. I'm waiting for it. They're losing uh, games, though. Yeah. I know. They're, they're starting to lose games, so I'm going to – Roll with it. And then ILL, I'm going with the Illini uh, as they take on Minnesota this week. And number one, because I hate P.J. Fleck. Uh, and number two, because Illinois at home as a dog, uh, I know that they've had some real shaky performances, but their defense is good. Their offense finds a way to make plays against comparable teams. So I am taking Illinois money line. I at looked home. at that one, and I stayed away because I was like, why? Well, I, I, there's something going on there for Illinois to be a home underdog against Minnesota. It's because the haters are out, D.Y. Don't let the haters get to you. They are trying to take down the Illini. They're going to bounce back after that brutal loss at Oregon last week. Uh, I also think people are just starting to hop on Minnesota uh, because they beat USC, UCLA, and Maryland in three straight weeks. Not the most impressive thing, especially, I mean, UCLA. They only beat them 21-17. UCLA is one of the worst teams in college football this year. Lincoln uh, Riley. Ooh. So, yeah, I'm I talk about a four loss Big Ten team, uh, Lincoln Riley. So, those are what I'm rolling with this week. Uh, what is your K State Houston best bet for the week? Uh, I'll have to go look. I think okay, I, and then I can yeah. tell you, I can tell you what you sent me, and then you uh, have the oh, under, I, on the K-State. under, uh, 28 I, and a half. I stayed the under wagon. I can't say to score under 28 and a half team total. I don't like that one. I weather, yeah. Willie, I guess Willie Fritz knows how to really shrink games, and I think he'll do it well. Well, in the last time that he played K State, they only scored ten points. So there you go. So I don't think it's a crazy bet. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna do this so people uh, reach out to me again on Twitter when a score happens, and they say, "Oh my gosh, you were really, really smart." Uh, Will Ancio plus three fifty to score a touchdown. He's becoming a touchdown machine. They're finding him open. Um, I think he does it again this week. What's the odds on that now? Plus 350. He has, out of real K-State players, he has the highest odds in terms of, like, if you want a better payout to score a touchdown. Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, another one that I would possibly throw out there, Zeon Chris, the Houston quarterback, is plus 230. Yeah. For, a, for a touchdown, uh, that may not be a bad one because I do think Houston probably punches it in. At if, least if, they, if they punch in a score or two, you would have to think Chris is one of them. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, that is best bets for this week. Now time to move on, talk a little Big 12 and look around the rest of the, week, the league with the Big 12 scoreboard. About reverted back right there to first grade Mason Voth and dropped a weeg right there as I was talking too fast. Uh, fortunately, the – handful of years of speech therapy knocked the uh, LW situation out of my repertoire. But uh, then my mom set me up for total embarrassment in front of my third grade class when, number one, she kept me, I'm going to get on a soapbox real quick here. She kept me in speech for too long at school. So I was doing it like into third grade when I really didn't need to keep for going. I don't know. Mason's mom is a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. And then I get, I get to, I get done with it. And the speech lady at Union Valley decides, oh, this would be a great thing to go announce in front of your entire class that you are an idiot that can't speak. And so they walk in like, oh, congratulations, Mason. It was the worst moment of my third grade life. Uh, so I still bring that up. My mom was actually upset about it, but, you know, they first child. So they screwed up a lot with me, like forcing me to do band for a whole year. Worst experience of my fifth grade life. Uh, when I had to do uh, that, so yeah. Uh, third, Sorry, third no. grade, third grade was the first time I got in real trouble. Like, just flat out chose to disobey a teacher. So I, got, mm. so that's my memory at third grade. Uh, this is Relford. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, speaking of people that also got into real trouble uh, on Saturday night, uh, I was going to stay at my brother's house after the game because it was late. I walk in close to 2 a.m. 
there are a thousand people there. And look, I get it. He's a sophomore in college. So like they're partying, they're having a good time, all that bleep KU, whatever. But he told me I could stay there. So I was like, oh, you at least would have said, hey, we're going to have a lot of people around. It might be loud. You really want to do this to where I could have gone. Oh, I could stay somewhere else. I could, you know, go see if I could stay at my grandparents. I could go wherever. At that point, I was, I was like, nope, I don't have any options. So at 2 a.m., I said, I'm just driving home to Wichita. Uh, oh. I got pulled over for speeding just past Junction City. So that was a, a fun time. Uh, but shout out to the, uh, to the, the sheriff's office employee that, uh, in whatever county I was in at that point, I don't know if I was still in Geary or if I had crossed into something else, uh, that let me off with a warning there, but that wasn't fun. Uh, so yeah. There you go. That was yeah. We got some stories. Yeah, yeah that was, you know, that, that's you how it goes. Have, that should be a new segment on the show. Story time. I hadn't told anybody about that yet. Really, I did have to. Unfortunately, I was on the phone with my mom at the time. She called and she was like, "Are you driving home?" I said, "Yeah, I am," because Bryant is uh, just raging through the night. And she's did like, you, "Oh, you told on your brother." <laughs> well. I mean, why I didn't have any other reason to be driving home other than that. So I got um, home a little after just, 4 a.m. You could have said you missed your wife and kid. <laughs> no, no. No, I really thought about finding some other way to do it because I was like, if I go home, I'm just going to get there and have to do everything I normally would at a normal time and not get to sleep. But did my the, wife did let me sleep in at least till like 1030. So did the okay. brother the, the brother get a call from the mom? No, I, she wasn't like too upset about that. She just wished that he would have said, hey. <laughs> this is going to be going on. You might want to find somewhere else to go other than just being like, yeah, no problem. You can sleep here. I was not going to sleep on the couch that had four people sitting on it wide awake uh, with bush light cans in their hand uh, at 2 a.m. So, yeah, that was, that was a good I, I can't, but I, can't I was on the phone with her when I got pulled over. I was like, I'm getting pulled over right now. <laughs> I, I can't believe the thought never crossed his mind. Like, this is going to be hard to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's just, I don't know. He's a little lackadaisical sometimes. I'm honestly... Shout out to him, but I was a little surprised that he made it to year two at K-State. I thought <laughs> he might be an academic probation or a, hey, he might need to take a, a semester or two off from school type of guy, but he's grinding right now. So shout out to Venus. All right, uh, let's go on here. Texas Tech, Iowa State, a lot of 230 games in the Big 12 this week. Texas Tech, Iowa State is one of them in Ames. The Cyclones, 13 and a half point favorite, same line as K-State has on the road at Houston against Texas Tech. I'll tell you this, uh, there's not much logic to it, but I do think Texas Tech actually keeps it inside of that I number. Do, Maybe do. just because it's a little bit low scoring. And I think well, Texas I, I think, has some I think Iowa State's but... played with their food so much lately. Yes. That, and, and Tech is like one of those teams that they can get on a weird heater, right? They are yep. a team with the – Bear Morton's going to play, it sounds like. Yeah, I – this is probably I, I'm not going to call upset alert here. I'm, maybe I should. This this feels like a scary game for Iowa State for some reason. Yeah, well, and if you go and and look um, at Iowa State and how things have have kind of gone on this year, like they're they're a real true blowout in the Big Twelve against a team that we respect now is Baylor, and that game. They ended up getting a a blocked punt for a touchdown in the game. And then, uh, let's see, go through the rest of it. Like, they had some kind of flukiness to it um, and some some luck that played into it. Uh, and then you go the last two games, they only beat West Virginia by 12, which was so odd because West Virginia has a terrible secondary. And Iowa State, I mean, Rocco Beck is – one of the, the the four or five best quarterbacks in the Big 12, and they've got one of the best receiving rooms in the league. They were only able to put up 28, win by 12. Then they only beat UCF by three. Texas Tech is better than those two teams, uh, especially if Baron Morton plays this weekend. So I, I think it probably stays pretty tight in there as well, which also when we're talking Iowa State, want to remind everybody that the Cats are headed to Ireland to play Iowa State next year. And what better way to kick off the 2025 college football season than cheering on the K-State Wildcats in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic in Dublin, Ireland. The Cats will square off with the Iowa State Cyclones on August 23rd, 2025. And whether it's a quick trip to Dublin for the game, a multi-city adventure throughout the Irish countryside, or experiencing the Emerald Isle on your own, there's a package for you. Visit Cats2Ireland.com for information on official travel and hospitality packages. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. So that is Iowa State, Texas Tech. Uh, next up, TCU Baylor on Saturday. You like the Bears in this one, obviously. 
I think they're, I mean, as much as I've been a Dave Aranda denier in the past, they are becoming one of my more favorite teams to kind of follow along with to see if they can really get this thing turned around because I think they are pretty scrappy. Uh, so I'm I'm interested in seeing how TCU Baylor plays out this weekend. Baylor. Thicken. Yeah. I am uh, also going that way with the Bears. So I just, I don't know. I, I, like, I like their vibe a little bit better. I'm a Sawyer Robertson guy. TC is not good enough to win three in a row. Come on. Is Baylor good enough to win three in a row? Yeah, well, they're better than TCU. Okay, all right. Well, that's fair. And they're at home, so I guess we'll give them that. Uh, Oklahoma State, Arizona State, this game in Stillwater. The Pokes, three-point dogs at home. Sam Levitt's back. Sam Levitt's back, so maybe Arizona State could throw. Maybe that hurts my under. If Sam Levitt wasn't back, both teams will probably run 90% of the time. I don't know. I don't know what to think of this game. You would think Arizona State wins comfortably, but the, the you know weird weird stuff sometimes well, happens. In reverse life. logic. Uh, do you say to yourself, is there any way that Mike Gundy can lose six straight games to start Big Twelve play at Oklahoma State? It, it's just one of those things that would have never seemed possible. No, it wouldn't. But they're so depleted in offense. They're so banged up on defense. Yeah, like they're like their three best players on defense are hurt. They they have no quarterback. Uh, their offensive lines banged up. I mean, they're it was not like so when we do our Big Twelve power rankings, ranking some of these teams is really really hard. Putting yeah. Oklahoma State at sixteen was not hard. Yeah, there's just so much not to like about them. Like you said, the defense is banged up, and then the parts of the offense that you have to rely on, like Ollie Gordon, has not been the same this year, and the quarterback situation has played out like what we thought it would be, not very good. So. Uh, yeah, I I think Arizona State wins this one. They probably cover. Um, they I I just I think it's going to get tough for Oklahoma State to to play for a lot of things. And Mike Gundy staring it down is, it his is worst homecoming. season since two thousand seven. It is their homecoming, and they make a big deal out of their homecoming. Yeah, well, play that song from like when I was in middle school. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Uh, tell the world I'm coming home. Guess who uh, is. Coming for a win this week in one of these crappy teams, Arizona and UCF. This is the worst game, maybe that the Big Twelve will put forth this season. I, and I know that there have been some bad ones, but these are two teams that had high expectations. They both suck. Neither of them are fun. Uh, Arizona, UCF, the Knights. This, I mean, they should tell you what people think of Arizona right now. UCF, a six-point favorite against UCF Arizona. has been like weirdly, um, excuse me, favored in games this year weren't they they were favored against byu they, they were, were favored against colorado by like favored 14. Against colorado by 14 like the books just won't quit ucf that's what they should is. they yeah. should quit ucf that's what i would say uh so i are you gonna quit ucf <laughs> i mean i i have and i've also quit arizona so like that's where i don't know where i go with this I, here's the thing i just at the end of the day I'm always going to revert back in these situations to going with Arizona. It's probably wildly stupid of me to do that. Uh, but I just have a, a tougher time thinking that Arizona's situation isn't going to at least at some point kind of pop through better than UCF. Like RJ Harvey is very good, but like the quarterback situation isn't good at UCF. Now we also have to ask ourselves, how much did Jed Fish mask Noah Fafita last year? Because Noah Fafita hasn't really looked like the same guy. He's just been kind of a chuck and duck, get it to T-Mac uh, type of player this year, and it's not turned into a 10-win season. But I, I'm going to go with Arizona. I feel nasty about it. And uh, this is a game where we talk about how bad the schedule is this weekend in college football. Um, if you go and look at the Big 12 and their TV assignments. The fact that nobody is playing on ESPN Plus with all these disgusting games going on says a lot about it, but this is FS1, so likely not great competition for K-State Houston, which is good for their TV number. Yeah, I'm going to say... I'll say Arizona at least covers, I guess. Yeah. All right, well, <laughs> let's, let's see. We won't pay a lick of attention to that one. That could also be one that, like, We'll get done with Kleiman's press conference, and somebody will be like, "You got you see what UCS doing to Arizona? It's like fifty nine to nothing." And it's like, I was oh. gonna say, have you seen this game? It's like forty nine to forty two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or yeah, yeah, exactly. Shootout has just gone off. Uh, nothing would surprise me with this game, but it it flat sucks. So, all right, 
Uh, that is a look at the Big 12 this week. Let's get back to the game that matters most in it this weekend, which is really the truth. I mean, K-State Houston, like every game K-State essentially plays now, even against whoever it is, turns into an elimination game. They cannot lose. if They want to keep their path to Arlington clear, and uh, they get the Cougs this weekend. So if the Cats get it done, who is the offensive and defensive MVP in this game? Uh, it's got to be DJ Giddens. Kind of go back to that. They, I, I don't think that you get away from it. I, I DJ Giddens big game for like three or four games in a row. That seems the way he was going. That just doesn't seem like there's a high likelihood. So I'll go back to the DJ Giddens train on offense defensively. Yeah, uh, that that's a little bit more of a challenge just because Houston doesn't do a whole lot of yeah. things to whole really trick good. you. Nothing. Uh, sure, they, they're they not going to throw it a ton. The, the, you could still get turnovers, but, you, you know, your turnover chances are <laughs> going to be lesser. You got to watch out for the QB run game. And who's going to, you know, I'll go Desmond Purnell. Um, I like that one. He's often been the guy kind of responsible for the QB run game a little bit, at least when he escape pressure or if it's designed. And I, I think he needs one. He's probably going to have to play a lot more snaps than he's accustomed to playing because Asa Newsom's out for the season. And two, I think he probably wants to redeem himself a little bit from a tackling perspective. Last couple of weeks have been a little bit brutal for him. So I'll go Desmond Purnell. All right. For me, I'll start on the defensive end. I'm going to throw two names out at you because I'm the, the the run game is where this thing starts. I think if Houston's going pass happy, um, I know good. that the secondary has struggled this year, but they've had success at slowing Donovan Smith down before. And I think. I don't think Houston's as tough to defend as some of the others uh, when it comes to that. But I, I stick it up front, and I would say, I mean, Austin Romain is one of the linebackers, and the linebackers are going to be crucial in this game. I like that you went Des Purnell. I thought about that because he really needs to step up. Uh, he's been – he was good at the very start of the season, but it's it's really dipped since then. He's got to clean some things up. Uh, but I'll, I'll go Austin Romain just because he's been the best linebacker all season for K-State, so he can kind of help it out there. Uh, and then one off the wall out there. I know this is very unlike me, and uh, my my Crusader card might get revoked, but I'm going to go Cody Stuffelbean in this game because if you look in, in run situations outside of Brendan Mott, he's been in the game the most for K-State at defensive end this year, and I think the edge guys will also be important when it comes to trying to be disciplined and good and stopping the quarterback run. Uh, so I think Cody Stuffelbean would be a guy that uh, needs to assist and kind of play up a little bit this week. Although he's been he's been fine all season, so that's not me saying that he's been bad or anything, but uh, that would be kind of an, an off-the-wall name that I throw out there. Not that I think this game gets close enough to where a huge play needs to happen, uh, but another name I might toss out is VJ Payne. Uh, he had the interception at yeah. Tulane, and he had the big tackle last week against Kansas in, in a big moment. So when they needed stuff to happen, yeah, and he had the pick in the red zone against Colorado. Yeah, so when they've needed stuff to happen, it's kind of been the VJ Payne story. And Austin Romain a bit this year. And Austin Romain, Jack Fabers with the stupid score against Tulane. Marquis Siegel's had a couple key interceptions. Yeah. Uh, he had a pick six against. Uh, yeah, but you think about it. I mean, Payne, like we just said, he had the, the game sealer at Tulane. He had the one against Colorado. He had the the, the tackle last week, the strip sack, or not really a sack, I guess. Uh, and then when you, you talk about Romaine, he forced the fumble that led to Jack Fabris' touchdown at Tulane, and then he forced uh, the fumble uh, last week that gave K-State the ball back around midfield to go and kick the, the game-winning field goal against KU. So Payne and, and Romaine have been the, the and Romaine. guys. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, little, that, that sounds like a like a like a band or something, right? Not a law firm. Not a law firm. Romaine pain if uh you know the, the fiber and lettuce is getting to you and, and putting you on the toilet. <laughs> so uh that's the thing. I, I tried to explain that to my wife a long time ago. I was like, Well, some people have a tough time with like the lettuce digestion. Uh she never understood why like some people the second that you eat it like a sandwich or something, they're like gone. I'm like, well, it's the lettuce. She didn't believe it. So I had to I had to look it up. So I'm well versed now 
uh, in, in the romaine pain that can be caused to some people. Uh, all right, prediction time. You have the Cats scoring under 28 points or right at 28 or less this week. Do they still cover the two touchdowns? Barely, and they barely get under that 28 and a half, so I wouldn't bet the farm on it. I have a 28-14. I think it'll be too nasty for field goals. I think Houston has a good plan early for K-State, kind of like when they did against Iowa State, where the Wildcats probably get out of the gates pretty slow on offense, hold Houston down. Maybe a late score from Houston gets under 14. I'll go 28-14 Cats. All right, I'm going 35-10 Cats. I think even if it is nasty, no respect. No I didn't get my. I I didn't get. Well, I have respect, but I also have respect for how good I think K State is. And we saw last year they play bad teams, they beat the crap out of bad teams. And On to me, road? what? On the road? Uh, well, they didn't really play the really bad ones on the road last year. Um, I mean, what the worst team they played on the road last year would have been Texas Tech because I mean they played two teams that played for the Big Twelve title on the road, and then they played Missouri, who won the Cotton Bowl. Uh, and who was the other road game last year in the Big 12? Uh, Texas O-State, Texas Tech. Uh, maybe I'm an idiot. Am I an idiot? What am I What am I forgetting here? Uh, I'm going to have Cincinnati. to go look it up now. No, I mean, not Cincinnati. Uh, okay, you, duh. Duh. Yeah, yeah. Duh, yeah. Uh, well, and that was a little different. I mean, that KU team won what they won eight or nine games last year. So, um, when they play bad teams, they right. beat bad teams. Um, I didn't give my offensive stud because I think it's going to be DJ Giddens. I think DJ Giddens goes for 200 yards in this game. I think just you feed the pig, you let oh your stud God. go be a stud. So, I think DJ Giddens does it. I'm taking the Cats 35 to 10 to win the game over Houston. I think it's ugly. I think they can control it though. Uh, and I think as we know, Houston, if they get behind, they're not making a comeback charge. So K state can kind of keep relying on the run game and, uh, should be an interesting game nonetheless. Cause like you said, respect Houston, respect Willie Fritz. It could happen, but I think K state is in good hands this weekend. And we'll see if, uh, the AP top 25 wants to drop them another spot after a win this weekend. But Good note on that for the people worried about the top 25 and the Big 12. Uh, you don't have to worry about the Associated Press anymore come Tuesday because the real polls that matter, matter, matter there you go, third grade Mason Voth speech impediment coming through. The polls that matter on Tuesday, they will be coming out in the Poor evening. Assassin. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe. I don't know where is Texas going to be. Uh, not the ones that determine who's going to be the next president of the United States, but the college football playoff will be coming out. Also, K-State kicking off their basketball season, a wild night in America. You have <laughs> the college football playoff poll and college basketball starting in earnest. I mean, like tonight. <laughs> oh, wow. Who, who would have even thought? Um, yeah, but, well, you know, election night. I guess yeah. because we find out, we start finding out results, but this is kind of my bugaboo. And I don't know. Cause you know, I didn't get to start voting until I'm just glad we're not going to get eh, any more ads seven years ago, I guess it was or six. How old, how old am I? I don't know. You tell me. Oh, I've been able to vote eight years now, man. It's that's been a while. Uh, so like, Growing up, I guess I didn't understand like the early voting thing. I think it takes the fun out of the voting process. And this is not a political statement, by the way. I'm just saying it takes the fun out of it that it's not just like everybody can go on one day and do it. It's like, like I'm going this afternoon to vote. Like, what? It's Thursday, October 31st. This is not, this is not election day. Like, I should be going next week. And I guess I could make that choice if I wanted to, but. Uh, it's a lot easier to do the early voting because it's closer to my house. You and complain the about it, but, then, uh, but it is a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very it's very convenient. It makes it a lot easier. I understand why it's a thing, but it's just you know, it's it's like one of the, it's like if we played the first quarter of the Super Bowl on on Thursday, and it's like ah, you got to wait till till Sunday to play the second and third quarter. And now we're gonna play the fourth quarter on Monday. It's like let's play it all on one day. Let's make this be a big deal now. I mean, come on. So yeah, <sighs> okay. Now, now voting's like a, a freaking conference tournament with 16 teams. We got to start on Tuesday and play all the way to Sunday. I'm not complaining about that either, though. I actually really enjoy how many games uh, are going to be played over the course of five days in Kansas City this year. So uh, these are things that philosophically 
I I miss like just the the one big day about it. Uh, but it is a lot easier and I guess more fun for people uh, to make things happen like this. All right, that is uh, your in, your endorsement to go out and vote. I guess this weekend. Uh, there you go. There you have it. Vote for K State to beat Houston by thirteen and a half this weekend. That's the only political endorsement I'm making this year. Uh, is the Cats by thirteen and a half? So we'll see. That's a big electoral college state down in Texas. Can the Cats get Texas? I don't know. Road to two seventy. Uh, <laughs> I wonder. Let's see how many in states that K State has won a game this year. Uh, how many electoral college votes would they have? How close would they be? To well, you had Texas and Louisiana and Colorado. So they get can yeah. So that's Kansas and Colorado sixteen, Louisiana's eight. That's twenty four. If they win this weekend in Texas, that's forty. So that would get them to what sixty four. Where else have they won a game? West Virginia. That's only four. That's weak. Um. So that's sixty eight. Um. And that's and, Iowa. And, and they're going to need to get Iowa. That I would get them to seventy. They. Cats are going to come up a little short of winning the presidency, folks. <laughs> I hate to break that down to you, but I want I would love to know if you did this for every team in the country, who would have the most? Probably a team that has the most wins, Oregon. Well, so Oregon, do they have a win in California yet? No. Okay. Um, Oregon's only worth eight. They're going to get 15 in Michigan this weekend. Um, yeah, I don't it, – it's going to be – if somebody's done a trifecta where they've played games in, like, Florida, Texas, and California, that would be your winner. So, like, let's AC, it's got to be, like, a, AC, a an AC, SEC AC. or Big Ten school. Uh, or ACC, that's a great if point. You win at, if you win at SMU, Stanford, and UCF – or SMU, Stanford, and Florida State. Okay, yeah. let me let me go look at Cal real quick to see where they've they've won games. Uh, because or Stanford, like you said, well, Stanford's big because they got that road win at, at uh, Syracuse, so they have a win in New York, which is twenty eight. That's that's uh, another one of the the big states. Okay, all right. So we're gonna look here at oh, Stanford's only won two games though. <laughs> <laughs> so they have won California, New York, because they beat Cal Poly in New York, but they uh, <laughs> have not beat anybody since that win against Syracuse. So, um, And by the way, Cal won at Alabama. Oh, Jesus. Cal's 4-4. Four and four, uh, yeah. and They don't have a uh, an ACC win. Uh, they and won they out. Don't, they don't, and the only road win they have is at Alabama. Uh, or Auburn. Alabama. Uh, actually, they beat... Uh, they, yeah, you're right. You're right. They, it's just that. But they did beat San Diego State. So they, they have a California win. They have Alabama. I don't. I'm guessing Alabama doesn't do a lot for you uh, in the maybe SMU. Alabama's I'm nine, so I guess look at SMU. Oh, that's a great. That's a great. SMU call. won at Nevada, so they get that one. Um, Nevada is nothing special. That's only six. So they get Texas. They get Nevada. They get Kentucky. Kentucky also nothing special. That's they eight. get California. Okay. That's that's and they get North Carolina. That's a must have. Oh, that North Carolina sneaky good one, 16 right there. So SMU might be it. SMU might be your president. That's a that's a great point. Well, okay. They have How California about, and North Carolina and Texas. Uh let's see here. Who else? I wonder if they're I mean, G, we now can we consider the G5 real quick? Uh is there anybody like I mean, I know Boise State is killing it. Let's see. They have – oh, they got a win in Georgia. Swing State, that's 16 for them. Um, they have a win – they have obviously a win in Idaho. That is worth nothing. That's four. Uh, it's funny for me to disparage other state sizes and saying it's worth nothing when Kansas is only worth six, but that's how I feel. Um, oh, you, you know – They won at Hawaii. Cool. That's only worth four, and they won at UNLV. So, Oh, we got a sneaky one. Give it to me. TCU. Oh crap! They won at Stanford. They did win at Stanford. Did they play UCF? No, they lost at home. Okay, they lost at home. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Got... <laughs> so TCU. They get California. They get Texas. Kansas. They get Kansas, Utah. and they get Utah. Uh, Utah is worth six as well. So I that's close. I mean that's that's probably the best you're going to get. They've got. I mean they're over a hundred now. 
So they're getting there. Um, man, I, I'm, I want to find a team. I, this is great for anybody still watching or listening here, by the way, another story time for it. shout out to my daughter. I told you, I was like, Hey, we, we can record this. I thought she'd be up by now, like Ooh. having her bottle in the morning. She's still asleep, uh, which she had been sleeping terribly. It turns out, uh, we gave her, she woke up like a couple hours ago. We put her down last night. We gave her some ibuprofen cause we're like, Oh, Maybe it's her teeth that are starting to kind of hurt her. Best she has slept in like weeks. So my wife now feels bad because she thinks that we've been uh, putting our child through pain by not giving her uh, her her Tylenol. By the uh, way, uh, these things. Notre Dame, Notre oh. Dame, is Texas, and Georgia. That's yeah. That's and, and Indiana, obviously. And Maryland because they won at Navy. Okay, so hang on. So or or uh, got that New York because they won at MetLife. Uh, that's New Jersey. Oh, so so the Garden State is fourteen still. That's not bad. Um, so and Georgia, Indiana, and Texas. Hang on, let me. I'm I'm trying to get this old road to seventy map all like grayed out so i can and by the way notre dame still plays at usc so they can get i was gonna say that I, they're gonna have a california game on there at some point and uh for those of you just joining us which this is a podcast so you've been listening all along unless you came to this specific moment uh we are trying to figure out right now uh which team would have the greatest electoral college count by spots where they've won games this year so all right give give notre dame to me again and uh, I'll try and rip through this and, and keep track of it in a nice, sophisticated way. What do you need from me? Uh, give me where Notre Dame has won games. Texas A&M. Okay. All right. So they get Texas. Obviously home game. So Indiana. Yep. Uh, Georgia Tech. So they get Georgia. Okay. Uh, they beat Navy. So New Jersey. New Jersey. And that's it for the time being, but they still have to play you at USC. Oh, so they've only won in four states currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, that gets them to 91. But if they were to get USC, that'd get them to 145. They might. They, they're up there, but so is TCU's up there. and Yeah, TCU's already over 100 uh, because they have California and Texas and then Kansas and Utah. So TCU another, is sitting at 106 right now. Another sneaky one is Virginia Tech. All right. Uh, hang on here. I'm going to have you rip some Hokies love to me. Uh, where's Old Dominion? Uh, they are in Pennsylvania. So you have Pennsylvania Swing State. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. That's The the Dems are jealous right now. They want it to stay up to California. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, that is big. Oh man, you know what they could have got? They were at Miami, but they lost. Oh, and they should have won that one. They yep. stole the vote from Virginia Tech. <laughs> Those yep. bastards. Yep. So that's all they have right now. But big opportunities: Syracuse and Duke. You got New York and North Carolina on Wait, the schedule. Uh, has Virginia Tech not won a home game? Yes. Sorry. They won okay. All right. So they have Virginia. So right another, now, another swing state. Eighty-nine. Well, not really anymore, but yeah. They're at 89. But they got New York and North Carolina opportunities. Yeah, which would be big. So if they get they play those, at Syracuse. that would add 44 to them. Yeah, that, that'd that be good. That'd put them at 133. So uh, I like that. That was a good call on Virginia Tech. Man, that they're, they got to be seeding you know what, right you, now. You know what I, did. I, just, I just looked at teams that won at Stanford. That's what. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's, that's a great call. I guess I should have looked to see teams that have beaten UCLA this year, too. Uh, because they've lost the problem five with the games. problem with the Big Ten is they don't go to Texas or Florida. So let's see. Um, Indiana has a win at UCLA, Oregon has a win at UCLA, and Minnesota or Minnesota has a win at UCLA. Minnesota, are they could they be interesting here? Um, Ooh. No, they only have one road win, and it's at UCLA. So all their other wins have come. I in the also same look way. to see who won at UCF. Yeah, BYU, BYU, Cincinnati, and Colorado. 
And BYU won in Texas. They beat SMU. So are we counting out the Cougs too early here? Could uh, we be I, looking at a, a Mitt Romney also jealous? Mormon president, finally, BYU. BYU won at SMU and Baylor. So they, they okay, doubled so. Texas. <laughs> And so they won at Wyoming. <laughs> uh, Wyoming doesn't do a whole lot for you. That's just three. So BYU gets Florida. And and Florida. And they have a, obviously they have a, Utah. They get Texas. And they still got to go to Arizona. Okay. Maricopa County. You're going to hear that a thousand times on Tuesday night. Uh, let's see. 82. I got to go, actually. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. DY's got to – yeah, DY has to go. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I We'll see how long I stick around for this uh, for then because – uh, yeah, nothing else going on right now. So yeah, well, Hey, we'll see you. Peace out. Have fun. All right. D Y is gone. And, uh, now you all just, you get me, uh, chilling out here, uh, ripping through. I don't know. We're going to, I, we're, we're maybe running low on, uh, everything that could go on here, but okay, let's, let's keep going here. Cause I'm fascinated by it. My daughter still asleep. Shout out to Elliot both. She's moving. She's moving now. Watch out. Uh, but we'll keep going until uh, we're we're done here. Okay, so anybody in the crowd, shout out any suggestions that you might have on teams that have significant wins in electoral college states. Let's take a look at the SEC. If anybody went and got big wins in the non-conference, huh. the SEC is probably in good hands because you, you're going to rip through and get some things. I will say this, Georgia has a massive opportunity this week because they are playing Florida in Jacksonville. So if they get the win, let's see, Georgia would already have a win in Texas. They obviously already have a win in Georgia. Uh, if they get a win in Florida, added on to it. And then let's see, they won in Kentucky. So, I mean, that's just a not very special eight points. So Georgia right now is in position. Oh, where did they play Clemson to start the year? That was in, was that? Mm, okay, that was in Atlanta. So that was also a Georgia win. Uh, but you look at Georgia's schedule then. They have opportunities to get, well, their last road game. This is insane. Uh, they play five more games this season. Only one is on the road. It is at Ole Miss, which would provide them six lowly votes. So they could top out at 103 in the regular season. So that started off pretty special. Not going to get there, though, like we wanted to. A lot of promise for Georgia. A lot of good thoughts on my part. It faded rather quickly, though. So that is, uh, that's a no-go. All right, I, I got to reset my map here. Uh, oh, wait. No, 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 no. Let's see here. Well, blank map. Look, I just found an easy way to do it. All right, shout out 270 to win. Uh, let's see here. Um, go around the rest of the leagues. Uh, I don't think anybody else is going to be in good shape for this. I need a crazy conference. Who in the Mountain West has done some wild stuff? Colorado State. Um, they have wins in Colorado. In Colorado, wow! Colorado State five and three, all their wins in Colorado. Home against Northern Colorado, UTEP, San Jose State, New Mexico, and then they beat Air Force. So, Jay Norvell, how about you win a game outside of your home state, loser? Okay, uh, my daughter very firmly awake now. Better look at this. Uh, we're total idiots for not talking about Miami a little bit more seriously because, as we talked about Cal um, and their situation. Uh, Miami did win at Cal. So Miami has Florida. They have California. Uh, where else does Miami get uh, a, a dub? Uh, and they get Kentucky as well. So they get 92 out of only three states because that's just how it rolls. Okay, let's, let's keep this going. We're going to go and tell my daughter cries or start saying my name, which my wife claims that she does. I have not heard it yet, so I don't buy it. Uh, it takes a lot for me to think that a child has said their first words. Does it make me sound harsh as a, as a parent? Maybe. Uh, but I'm just, you know, trying to give proper respect out there. I don't want to be a liar. Um, let's see. This is tough. This is tough. TCU might be our leader in the clubhouse right now. I don't know that anybody else is getting the job done like some of these others. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Penn State. What are the Nittany Lions cooking up? They're 7-0. and uh, So Penn State has obviously won in Pennsylvania. They've won in West Virginia. They've won in California. Um, they won Wisconsin. Um, that's it. Those are their wins right now. They have the opportunity to add Indiana and Minnesota. So you're looking at like 21 more. They could get to a, over 100 this year. So good for Penn State, but not what we're looking for. We're still looking for a massive winner. Who's done some crazy stuff? Uh, let's see. Army has wins in Florida, Pennsylvania, and Oklahoma on the road this year. Um, okay, so and they have New York, and then they get Pennsylvania, then they get Florida, and then they get Oklahoma. So they get to 84. That, that started off promising. Those are some big states. For Army, if you're looking for this to happen, Army needs to win in two weeks or one week next weekend their game at North Texas. If they do that, they get to 124. The Army Black Knights, it's very fitting, uh, but they might be on their way to becoming president of the United States of college football in this wild, stupid exercise that has gone on for way too long. But again, we keep going because it fascinates me uh, because I, I find myself as somebody that is loosely interested in politics and the inner workings of them. I do not care about the people or the parties or the whatever else, but I, the whole thing is very fascinating to me. Um, so I, you bet your bottom dollar. I, if you've got, an analyst on TV next Tuesday, even though I'll be watching K-State basketball. Uh, I will want to see every video of them at their magic touch screen that they're just beeping and booping all over the place. And like, so-and-so won this county in 1992 in a local school board race. And that's why we know that in 2024, so-and-so is going to win the presidency in this state. Wild stuff that goes on there. So shout out to all those people out there. Okay. Other teams with good starts. Um, SMU, they have road wins at Nevada, Kentucky, California, and North Carolina. Well, maybe we need to give a little bit more respect here. So uh, let's go SMU. They have a Texas win, obviously. They have a Nevada win. They have a North Carolina win. Um, duh, 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 duh. And they have a California and Kentucky uh, so that's 124 right now. That's pretty good variety there for the Mustangs. Um, they might be – all right, I'm going to write this one down so I don't forget it. Okay, because I want to try one other one. Um, ah, Unfortunately for Pitt, they played Syracuse at home. So they only have wins in Ohio, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. Respectable, but not enough here. Also, I mean, they've only played – Two road games so far this season. That's wild. They end with back-to-back -back road games at Louisville and Boston College, and they play in Texas this weekend. So I guess I better do some some adding up here because if Pitt wins, they'll have a win in Pennsylvania. They'd have a win in Texas then this weekend if they get the job done. Uh, and then they would also have Ohio, which is a nice 17 uh, in the Electoral College. And then North Carolina – would put them at uh, – that only gets them to 92. So SMU, uh, congratulations. I don't remember any of the other ones we talked about. I know Army was high up there right now if they get a win against North Texas next week. But I think SMU is uh, the closest to winning the presidency right now with 124 electoral college votes. So shout out to the Mustangs. They lost to BYU, who hasn't, uh, but they are on their way to possibly becoming the next president of the United States, uh, which makes sense. SMU – uh, their campus, home to the uh, George W. Bush uh, Presidential Library and Museum, which I love those things. You, you take me through Abilene, Kansas, boom. I want to go see Dwight Eisenhower's childhood home and his library and museum and everything. I tried making the case to my wife when we've been down there. I was like, eh, you know, Dallas, I kind of want to go see wh what's going on at, at the Presidential Library. You give me one of those, I'm going to go to it. I want to see it. She was having none of it. She did not let me do it. So I was disappointed by that uh, because she thought it would be boring. It probably would have been to some people, not to me. I enjoy loose history and, uh, you know, uh, anything that is kind of museumed. Uh, I love a good museum. Shout out to the Civil Rights Museum in Memphis. Also one of my favorite things that I've ever done. So I 
just I like a good museum, which you probably are like, hey, you'd probably like the baseball hall of fame. Never been. Have never been to a hall of fame like that. Um that might be yeah, those would be cool, but I don't know. I when am I ever going to be in Cooperstown, New York? Probably never. All right, this went on for way too long. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. If you want our full coverage of the Cats and the Cougars this weekend, go to On3, find kstateonline.com. We will be in Houston tracking the Cats all weekend. So we're out of here. Until next time with our post-game reaction tomorrow.